what is gross total income as per section 14 income of a person is computed under the following five heads so there are five heads of income okay Salaries, income from house property, profit and gains of business or profession, capital gains, income from other sources. So these are basically, you know, five heads, uh, you know, under which uh, you have to calculate the income of a person. Okay. Now, normally a person would have, you know, one or two, you know, incomes. I mean, under these five heads. Normally, you know, if you are working in a company, you are getting salary. So you have, you know, salary as your income. Suppose you have, I mean, you have become a little bit older, so you will have a property. Suppose you have two properties, in one property you are staying, another property you have rented out to someone, so you will have income from house property along with salaries. Suppose you are also doing some business, okay, very un unlikely because you are, if you are working in a company, you won't be having your own business. So if you are having a business, then you will have profit from gains of business or profession also, okay. Then capital gains, suppose you have sold some land or building or some jewelry, Okay, which you have sold on profit. That means you bought some land at 1 lakh and you have sold it for 20 lakhs. So you will have 19 lakhs of capital gains. So you have to pay tax on that. Then income from other sources. That means you have some you know, money lying in your bank account and there is some interest. So interest from bank account as well as dividend when you receive from companies if you hold, I mean having some shares. So that will be coming income from other sources. So these are the all possible kinds of five heads. So in one of the year, I was having income from all the sources, okay? Like, you know, my father was doing business. I was a partner in that business. I was working in a company. I had a, you know, a house property, which I had given on rent. I had sold some property, so I had capital gains. So I was having some dividends or income. So I had income from all the sources. Very rarely a person will have income from all the sources, okay? Otherwise, these are all the profit this thing, okay? Read this. Uh, the aggregate income under this heads is termed as gross total income. So first you calculate the income from all the sources, whatever sources you have, and then just calculate and it is called the gross total income. Then, in other words, gross total income means total income computed in accordance with the provisions of the act before making any deduction under section 80C or section 80U. So, you know, uh, first you calculate the income under all the five heads. After that, you are allowed some deductions under section 80C to 80U. So there are many deductions which are allowed to you, which we'll discuss later. Okay. So um, like, you know, we did ELSS uh, schemes under the income tax where you get a ATC benefit up to 1,50,000 rupees if you deposit the money or take an insurance policy or something like that, make a house. So we're going to discuss that all those, you know, deductions later on. So I'm going to not be going to deduct, I mean, discuss them now. Okay. No. What is total income and how it is computed? Total income of an SSC is gross total income as reduced by the amount permissible as deduction under section 80C to 80U. So first you have to calculate gross total income, then reduce all the deductions which are permissible from 80C to 80U, okay? And then you get a total income. The scheme of computation of total income and tax liability thereon can be easily understood with the help of the following chart. So let's understand. So this is basically, you know, Computation of income for the assessment year. So income from salaries. First, what is your income from salaries? What is your gross salary? What is your, I mean, all kinds of deductions which you get. So ultimately, first you have to compute your income from salaries. Okay, fine. You may be getting some allowances. You will be getting some, you know, perquisites like you maybe have a, a, a house given by the company to you. So first you have to calculate and then some deductions will be allowed to you. Okay. And then the result will be your income from salaries. So first of all, you have to compute what is the salary income on which you are going to pay tax. So there are rules and regulations for that, which we are going to discuss that later. The second is income from house property. Okay. So, so you have to compute income from house property, which will be basically, you know, if suppose you are getting some rent, okay, then uh, you are allowed some deductions. After that, you get your income from house property on which you are supposed to pay tax. So there are some rules which are going to understand later on. Then profits and gains of a business. Read this, Kishore. Net profit as per profit and loss account. Add amount which are debited to uh, profit and loss account but are not allowable as deduction under the act. Now, you know, uh, companies prepare a profit loss account. Okay. And then uh, if you have debited some money to profit loss account, which you have shown as an expense, but that is not allowed under the Income Tax Act. 
suppose there are certain personal expenses of the director or the owner of the company that will not be allowed as a deduction so it will need to be added okay so you have to pay a tax uh, you know after adding these expenses which are not allowed under the income tax act less expenditure which are not debited to pnl account but are allowed <coughs> allowed as deduction under the act so uh, there are certain expenses which are not there in the profit loss account but they are allowed for example you know depreciation on your assets which is allowed as you know as an expense suppose you are not debited uh, you know the depreciation to your profit loss account so then you are allowed still you are allowed for that deduction okay uh income which are credited to pnl account but are exempt under section 10 or are taxable under uh, other heads of income suppose you know you are having a agriculture income you are doing business okay suppose you are having agriculture income so agriculture income will be reduced from your uh, which you have included your profit loss account so it needs to be taken off okay suppose you have some interest on bank account so it will be shown as a other income not as a business income under other head of income okay those income which are not credited uh, add those income which are not credited to pnl account but are taxable under the heads profit and uh, profit and gains of business or profession so there are some incomes which you have not shown them in your profit loss account but they are to be you know uh, they are taxed under the head profit and gains of the, this thing so that you need to add profit and gains of business or profession so ultimately you will arrive what is my profit capital gains uh, amount of capital gains less amount exempt under section 54 Uh, 54B, 54D, 54EC, 54F, 54G, 54G, and 54G. Income from capital gains. So basically, suppose you have sold, for example, suppose you have sold a house for you know certain amount, okay, and you are making a gain. Suppose you have bought a house for one crore and you have sold it for two crores. So you are in, have, your income will be one crore. Amount of capital gain will be one crore. You bought it. Suppose example. Let me just give you an example again. Suppose you have bought a house for say 50 lakh rupees and you have sold it for 2 crores so what is your capital gain which will come under the first column first row 1 crore and 50 lakhs oh, isn't it like okay now i just i'll just explain this here okay on an excel sheet that's not the case i'm just giving you a small example not you know detail one at the moment can you see this excel sheet can you see the excel sheet yes, yes sir suppose you have a house you know you have a house property in delhi okay suppose you bought it at cost was say 50000 okay and you sold this property at say 3 lakh 50000 or suppose you sold it for say 50 lakh rupees Okay, so what is your capital gain? So your capital gain will be this amount minus this amount. So this is your capital gain. Suppose let's say your your this money was fifteen lakhs, okay, or say fifteen lakhs. Pay up ne khareeda tha. So what is your capital gain? your cost of the property was 15 lakhs you sold at 35 lakhs okay fine so this on this amount you have to pay tax now normally the tax is 20% suppose you bought this house in say uh, you know uh, 2012 uh, and you sold it in 2024 so this is a long term this thing so you have to pay tax of 20% for example So what is your tax? How much you are supposed to pay tax? कितना tax देना पड़ेगा आपको? Six 
7 lakhs 7 lakhs because you bought it at 15 lakhs and you sold at 50 lakhs so your total capital gain was 35 lakhs and suppose the tax on capital gain assuming it's a long term capital gain you bought the house in 2012 you sold in 2024 okay so anything you wish to sell after 2 years after buying it it is called long term capital gain and the tax in india is say 20% okay so what is the tax 7 lakhs now suppose you want to avoid this tax okay you don't want to pay this tax so uh, so you may you know take a benefit by you know uh, 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 under section 54 okay by buying a new house by say you know uh, buying a bonds pay 35 lakhs ka apne bond suppose aapne ek bond khareed liye 25 lakh ke bond khareed liye capital gains bond so these are called capital gains bond okay if you i mean invest this money in some capital gain bond here your money is blocked for 5 years okay so these are 5 years you know uh, 5 years capital gains bond so the money goes to the government for 5 years okay fine and you will get some interest on that so now your you know uh, your tax will be calculated like this so you will have to pay tax of 20% which means you have to pay tax how much tax you are paying 20 lakhs 2 lakh rupees have you followed so maximum money which you can deposit is 50 lakhs in capital gains bond for example i'm just giving you one exemption okay so under the capital gains you can exempt uh, you can you know invest maximum 50 lakhs so you have invested 25 if you want to save everything, you invest all the money because you still have the limit. So your tax will become zero. So this exemption is under section 54. Just to repeat, you uh, you know bought a house for 15 lakhs, you sold a 50 lakhs. So your net capital gain was 35 lakhs. So under section 54, if you invest this money for five years in a capital bond, okay, maximum amount you can invest is 50 lakhs. Suppose you invested 35 lakhs. So your tax will be zero but in case if you invested only say uh, 15 lakhs for example so you have to pay 4 lakh rupees tax so sir in this capital gain bonds will get will also get the interest right uh, you will get you know a, 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 a five percent interest on that i mean currently you're getting five percent okay okay we should be taxed again you know in the next year when you no. get some I mean, so that interest that. will be taxed. So, this will be your other in income sources next year. Now, if you get this money, you will get 1.5 lakh You know, uh, suppose you have invested 50 lakh rupees. But in this case, I have to calculate on 15 lakh rupees. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this will become, in the next year, you have to pay income tax on this also. From income from other sources. In this year, you will get a chute. This will get a full chute. But in the next year, you will get a capital gain. उसके ऊपर आपको इनकम फ्रॉम अदर सोर्सेज में आपकी इनकम लगेगी इज दैट ओके यस सर फाइन सो लेट्स गो बैक टू दिस सो दिस इज वन ऑफ द एग्जांपशन ओके व्हिच इज आई थिंक 54 ईसी और आई डोंट नो आई एम नॉट फॉरगेटिंग व्हाट इज दैट सो देन इनकम फ्रॉम इनकम फ्रॉम कैपिटल गेन दैट यू हैव टू पे टैक्स देन यू हैव इनकम फ्रॉम अदर सोर्सेज सो यू हैव ग्रॉस इनकम देन देयर आर सम डिडक्शंस सो यू कैलकुलेट इनकम फ्रॉम अदर सोर्सेज सो दिस इज योर इनकम फ्रॉम uh, gross total income income from salaries income from house property profit and gains of this is the summary of what we have done capital gain other sources total okay fine then adjustment on account of set off and carry forward of losses suppose you have a loss in the last year so you can claim that your loss suppose you have filed your income tax return okay and you have suffered a loss you can even show that as a loss in this year so your after adjustment of the uh, previous year losses, your gross total income will be calculated. Is that okay? So you have to compute income from all the sources, income from salaries, income from house property, income from business profession, capital gains, other sources. And uh, you may have income from all the sources or you may have only income from one or two sources. It, that is 
I mean, depending on the, I mean, the person to person. But then, if there is some kind of a loss which you have incurred in earlier years and you are allowed to carry forward the next year uh, because you have filed your income tax return and as is, it is permissible, uh, so we are going to understand what, how you can claim that loss of the last year, I mean, in my coming lectures. So, uh, you arrive at gross total income. Okay. Then, you are entitled for deductions under section 80C to 80U. Okay. So, it is called that after that you have total net income. Then, you compute the tax liability. Okay. Then, you are allowed some rebate under section 87A. If your income is less than 5 lakhs, we are going to discuss that also. Then, you have add this. So, let us do some question. Okay. So that you understand. Okay, let, let's uh, you know, and then you know there is a something called rounding off. So can you read this round, rounding off? Uh, rounding off of uh, rounding of income. The taxable income shall be rounded off to the nearest multiple of ten rupees, and for this purpose, any part of a rupee consisting of paise shall be uh, ignored, and thereafter, if such amount is not a multiple of ten. Then if the last figure in that amount is 5 or more, the amount shall be increased to the next higher amount, which is a multiple of 10. And if the last figure is less than 5, the amount shall be reduced to the next lower amount, which is a multiple of 10. Okay, so we are going to do this only when, you know, we do a question. Okay, I am going to explain this through an example later on. Okay, read this. Computation of tax. Computation of tax for the assessment year 24-25 under the regular tax regime. Tax rates applicable for the assessment year 24-25 are given in Appendix 1. Okay. So, these are the rates. I am going to show you the rates. Okay. So, this is called the regular tax regime. Okay. Fine. So, now we have two regimes. Uh, one is the regular tax regime. So, the rates are given uh, this thing. Okay. So, the rates are applicable like this. Okay. Okay. So, uh, just read this. Individual uh, Hindu undivided families, AOPs, BOIs, the tax rates applicable to individuals are also applicable to a, a Hindu undivided family, an association of person, a body of individual or an artificial jurisdictional person. So there is a same tax rate for individual, HUF, association of persons, body of individuals. So rates are same, identical. Okay, that is what is trying. The rates applicable for the assessment year 24-25 are as follows. Regular tax regime is the default tax regime up to the assessment year 23-24. Now, you know, this you must understand. So, there are two regimes. One is called the regular tax regime, okay, which is the default tax regime, regime up to the assessment year 2022-23-24, okay. However, for the assessment year 24-25, the individual HUF, AOP, etc. has to exercise the option under section 115 BAC to avail the benefit of the regular tax regime. So now, you know, this regular, this was called the, you know, default regime. Now you have to, uh, you know, exercise the option to claim it. Okay. I'll just explain. So this is your, uh, you know, regular tax regime. Okay. Yes. Fine. Uh, so up to 250,000, no tax. Uh, from 2 lakh 50,000, next 2 lakh 50,000, 5% tax. Next 5 lakhs, 20%. Above 10 lakhs, 30%. So, this is the tax you are supposed to pay. Okay. So, up to 2 lakh 50,000, there is no tax. And then, uh, you know, if you are a senior citizen, that means you are up to the age of 60, then the exemption limit is 3 lakh rupees. Okay. But if you are a super senior citizen, that means your age is, you know, uh, more than 60, but less than, uh, you know, uh, sorry, more than 80. In that case, your exemption is limit is 5 lakhs. So that means anybody who is earning income below 60 lakhs, the exemption limit is 2 lakh 50,000. Anyone who is earning income, who is, who, sorry, his age is between 60 to 80, that means his, uh, you know, exemption limit is 3 lakhs. And anyone whose, uh, you know, age is above 80, then up to 5 lakhs, he doesn't have to pay any tax. So, that is what is all written here, okay? The exemption limit of uh, rupees 2 lakh 50,000 is applicable in the case of any other resident individual uh, born on or after April to 1964 or a non-resident individual, any HUF, AOP, BOI. Rebate under Section 87A, resident, resident individual whose taxable income does not exceed 5 lakh, can claim a rebate under Section 87A from income tax. The amount of rebate is 
income tax on total income or rupees 12500 which is less so if, is, ha, now you know if your income is below 5 lakhs okay then you are entitled for a rebate up to maximum of 12500 okay so we are going to do some question to understand you know how much exemption you get but the maximum exemption which is eligible to you is 12500 if your income is below 5 lakhs if your income is more than 5 lakhs then you don't get this exemption and this exemption is only given to resident individual if you are a non resident you will not get this exemption only if you are a resident of india okay <coughs> and your income is below 5 lakhs then you will get an additional rebate of 12500 okay fine read this firm a partnership firm including a limited liability partnership firm is taxable at the rate of 30% no exemption limit company a domestic company is taxable at the rate of 30% and non domestic company is taxable at the rate of 40% so you know uh, uh, if you are a partnership firm on your profit you are supposed to pay 30% tax but if you are a company now company can be a domestic company or it can be a foreign company a domestic company has to pay 30% tax a, a foreign company has to pay 40% okay apart Sir, from that ha ah, ha ji this is the corporate tax na no, that we are talking no ha ah, ji this 30% 40% sir ye corporate tax hi hai na ha ye corporate tax hai if the company is an indian company then the company has to pay 30% tax okay okay abhi hum kishor will do some questions so you will be able to understand so we will we'll do that okay i'm just going to do that okay so just uh, you know first we must understand apart from that there is something called surcharge okay so there is some surcharge here for individuals i'm just going to just skip that at the moment surcharge on individuals so i'm going to come back and when i do examples then there is sur surcharge on firms okay then there is some surcharge on companies domestic companies there is some surcharge on foreign companies okay fine so uh, let's go to air uh,